In my capital, I have just built Great Bath. I think it's one of these things where when you're at war, you've got a choice of what to do with your cities. Either you spend your entire economy backing up your war effort, and the way you would do that is to basically focus on gold, anything that gives you gold. Commercial hubs, harbors, trade routes, improvements like plantations, camps, that sort of stuff. Or you can set yourself up for just having a general advantage, and Great Bath is one of the ways you could do that. Buda is now safe from flooding, that's very handy. And now I can do something, again, maybe pointless, but Temple of Artemis, seven turns. I, I'm generating a genuinely awesome civilization that I'm sort of building up at home whilst I invade abroad. It's it's really good. All right, Ziz has no wall. So if I do one attack this turn, next turn we should be able to do the double and just take it like that. This man at arms has just arrived and Tyre is just there. You could say that Iz is entirely vulnerable to attack. Ah. Oh humor. One day I'll figure out what it is. <laughs> oh, misclick. <laughs> Go pillage the mine. Come on. Can we knock down the walls in this turn? Oh yeah, you better believe we can. Okay. We should be able to take two cities next turn. Again, I should remind you that by and large, I'm just using a single army from a city-state. This is mainly Woolens. There's a couple of troops that have funneled all the way up from Brussels, but not many. Hungary is just brutally strong, especially at this early game. There's Ziz. In comes the <laughs> rushing swordsman. One, two, and three attacks, and there's Tyre. It's at this point of the game but I often wonder wouldn't it be fun if you could stack warlord's throne you know like multiple cities it just gives you 20% each time imagine a world where that was possible it would be both horrific and wonderful at the same time one two three Ooh, it's close I would say this attack is going well fairly well we'll use fairly well as a as a word right now so really really important and interesting military tactic I've picked up on Civ 6 after a huge amount of time playing the game and I couldn't believe I didn't know this from the start right when you're attacking cities like this you should never attack front on you should always go side on yeah like that you see look it, it works every time hey don't you groan at me i can hear you don't do it two cities taken that's pretty much every important phoenician city taken we are racing towards 100 by 100 without actually really building anything ourselves imagine just being in this city and thinking there's nobody that <laughs> nobody can attack me right now and then just going attack like that <laughs> Like, who was that? And why Why did they appear screaming? One thing I will do, now that I've picked up a bunch of harbours, is conscription's really not giving me anything. These are all levied units. It says that it's giving me more gold than it actually is. Maritime Industries. That is a card that would be quite handy, because what I need to do now, once everything is fixed and actually, you know, not broken and flaming, is galleys. Uh, just generally a navy. If I can build a navy, you know, big one, I can go and find the new world, and we can just bring this little pain train abroad. I mean, what could go wrong? One more city taken. I believe there is but a single city over to the right. I could leave Venetia alive here, but I don't see the point of it. I think I might just remove her from the game. The real question is if you have one city left with two population, how are you getting 11 gold per turn and 200? I mean, that in itself is fairly impressive. I, I actually respect Venetia for that a little bit. That's just a barbarian nuking itself into my city walls. Again, don't worry about that. This this is what you need to have a look at right now. We have a lovely Temple of Artemis by... Did you see that in the background? These lovely little snuffly trufflies. Mmm, yummy. Digging up the ground with their nose boxes and having a little scriffle. Delicious. My capital should now be happy, plump, and spacious. Ooh, all the things that you might want in a capital. How do we continue growing this city into something unbelievable? A watermill and a builder. Beautiful. <laughs> the thing is, I've actually ended up really populating a huge chunk of this continent. I like the idea that by the time I meet somebody, I have explored and utilized pretty much all of it. So there's a large part of me that is tempted to just print settlers in a little bit. Maybe I will do that. Maybe I will. You know what? I will. <laughs> it's just gonna do it. Whoa. Hang on a second. Carthage is walls. That, my friends, that is not on. I, I need to bring a proper army across for this. Come on. Where's my battering ram? I didn't even start moving it across because I just assumed this would be a terrible city. Ugh. Fine, I'll bonk my head against the walls and do this manually. I don't enjoy doing this. It gives me a headache. Okay, I don't think the walls are going to last a long time, but yeah. I, I am I am impressed by the fortitude of this city. It does have a unique harbour, so maybe that's one of the main reasons it's actually holding out. Castles! Black army. Yes. Hold it on. Hold on to that as an idea for a little bit. Oh, the galley rush has begun now. Let's get shipbuilding in a second, then we can start looking to get across the water. Mathematics and feudalism. Name me a more cool combo, apart from, let's say, 
ship building and stirrups yes legendary combo next job is just to find where the niter is again you've seen you don't need much niter but a little musket rush Ooh, cheeky musket rush that's the sort of thing that i want to line up the next invasion of the other continent yes don't worry i know about that other continent it hasn't hidden from me let's see how much we can decimate these walls this is without siege equipment you ready for this combining the plus five anti i was gonna say anti cab that's that's the one thing it doesn't have the plus five raven king plus for oligarchy and plus five great general is a plus 14 ability and we can go a uh, bam 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 and bam and oh yeah who needs siege equipment am i right you may be asking why am i not naming these units a lot of them could be named the reason is city-state units they get deleted so often by the city-states between levying i just feel bad i feel really bad that i would bring you into the game and then hurl you out of it so quickly so channel supporters i love you all i love you all next game when, when i'm when i've got a reliable military that isn't gonna die this is a scientist that acts as a medic i am not gonna bother carting you around let's just pop you immediately give myself plus five combat strength and there is a profit this is not helpful right now but it will be helpful in a little bit i'm just having a quick dip into mercenaries and then we're gonna head down to this this card wars of religion is why having a religion is very handy it doesn't even matter if you don't really follow your own religion it doesn't even matter if you barely know what your own religion is we can live we can live there's carthage and for a little bit just a small moment i am the only person that exists on this continent and the world remember this bliss remember this beautiful beautiful time it will not last this mercenary almost killed my scout how dare you die <laughs> one hit oh i forget how powerful these troops are at killing barbs it's 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 quite funny my first galley oh actually i think i built multiple at the same time there that's cool get that and then ship building how is my tech on turn 100 compared to the rest of the world i haven't met i'm in third score i'm clearly leading so you know what this start has been a fairly decent one I'm gonna plan out where i'm gonna put all my cities fresh water is interesting in this area very interesting i reckon i can get a good case of having settled this entire place with I really want to settle over here mm. oh yeah it does have some good campuses i reckon six cities will do it so we've got amsterdam making one utrecht can you do one as well and i'll put the settle card in in a second a division of labor will help another great general as well my third now oh, i've got galleys go find the rest of the world the best bit about this is that they don't know <laughs> they don't know what i've been doing on this continent they will have never met anybody that could possibly have lived on this continent so i will be totally grievance three it's it's cheeky it's brilliant war crimes if a war crime happens in a forest with no one around to see it is it a war crime these are the questions let's take off strategos take off serfdom let's oh no serfdom is good we've got the legacy card i tell you what i'm going to change the classical republic briefly because the legacy card can be put back in at any point oligarchic legacy oh it's a good one serfdom colonization charismatic leader to get more points and maritime industries that's a good little set i've discovered one source of nitre and i've put my district on top of it that's good really sorry let's just go back to that briefly one source of night and there's five on this continent cut off that's that's fine one on the southern tip one of my capital johannesburg's got one one by where i was going to settle and one in the tundra so we've got plenty don't forget i only need one quarter of the amount of night that you may normally consider to be a good amount hungry just being hungry i'm saving up a huge gold glut and i could be levying city states but at the moment i'm not i'm holding fire on a lot of them because when i do go to war i want to make sure that i have the maximum turns possible to go and invade the ai there is a reason why i'm holding off so let's get engineering quickly to unlock aqueducts there's a few cities that are just waiting on aqueducts for some really good industrial zone setups here all right unfortunately it doesn't look like i can get off this continent without entering the ocean good to know good to know well, i might be able to go around this way we'll see i will sacrifice a couple of these troops but don't forget all my levy troops they can also go plus team movement at sea as well which is quite handy see if we can make my way across in your capital i would always recommend putting stables down because the unique units all come from stables they're all mounted cavalry units always very handy to have oh i've got a lot of spare envoys this will be really handy for when i find the other land mass okay engineering is done what do i want to do do i want to focus on getting cartography quickly to go across the ocean or do i want to rush muskets i think i'd rather go across the ocean let's find a way across first then we'll worry about the specifics after that point because it doesn't look like 
like I can get there. Not with what I've got, anyway. More cities! Sprawling Empire. It's all good stuff. That is a plus four campus when I'm ready to do that. Oh, that'll be good. Ooh, little island. Is it a one-tile deaf island, or is it something that might lead to something else? No one knows! Come on, give me something. Give me something to work with. Nope, man's not good. Come on, go on, go on, go on. Ah! Oh. Teasing me. It was teasing me. Fine. I'll have to wait till cartography. This is what I would like to call an unnecessary delay. Unnecessary indeed. Great scientist. We've got Hildegard. I've got a few holy sites now, so that could work. And Himerios. Useful. That changes things. Okay. Ericsson actually gives my naval units the ability to enter ocean tiles. Now, I can't use my embarked units in the same way, but that's interesting. We'll have to keep an eye on that. Oh, I have a single holy site and it's plus one. Get over there, great scientist. <laughs> Oh dear. Oh no, I've got a holy site up here. What's this one? That's a plus zero. Okay, maybe not. Pest. Ten population. Beautiful. And Woolen's just taken its army back. So we currently have no levied army at all, but we do have 1,700 gold just kicking around, which, let me tell you, a useful amount. A very useful amount indeed, especially with Divine Right just around the corner. Divine Right. This is where the game gets very interesting. Monarchy always helps. Maritime industry is not so much anymore. Conscription will do to save us a little bit of gold and professional army. Very handy going forward, although actually veterancy will do for now in peacetime. Serfdom is useful, natural philosophy is useful, and again, colonization will kick that one in for a second. Three turns away from cartography. First thing I do in my capital is my government plaza, which is across the river. Let's pick up the foreign ministry. Five turns to complete it. Leveraging city-states is half gold, and city-state units gain four combat strength. But, but that's another bonus on top of all the other bonuses we've got. That can't be right. Oh yes, ladies and gentlemen, that is absolutely right. Well, it's more than that. It's divine right. I'm going to spend the faith on Ericsson just so that I can send my boats across the water early. Seems like a bit of a strange decision considering I'm just going to get cartography very s soon, but the plus one sight also really helps. I want to scout ahead. I want to find out what's going on. I want to trade with people before I invade them. I want to get as much gold in as I physically possibly can. So where are you? Here you are. Pop you down immediately. And let's go find a new world. A new world to conquer. A new world to exploit. Fly, my pretties. Fly. It is just like a little bit of a swarm, isn't it? There they go. Report back if you find anything. Anything at all. Oh, World Congress. I have zero voting power and I don't know anybody in this Congress. Let's vote City Center because that'll probably go few. <laughs> and I want fewer grievances. I mean, no one can vote for me because no one knows who I am. But what can you do? Oh, that's brutal. That was two improved horses with my pantheon. That's just been droughted to oblivion, oh dear. I would have taken droughted to Skyrim, but oblivion is too far. Just a little bit of an Elder Scrolls joke for you there. You know, you're welcome. Oh, it's land covered in crabs. Oh no, turn around. What have we found? What have we found? It's not worth it. Got more land in this direction. Oh, <gasps> hello, Sweden. Sweden, am I getting this right? Do you have tea? Oh, you do. Oh, you do. You cheeky so-and-so. I. How about a deal where you give me everything? Yeah, they really will. This is why it's good. Do a bit of trading before you meet people. And look, you can see there are no grievances and no penalties to diplomacy. They could not care less about what I've been doing because they know not of what I've been doing. Cartography. Everyone can embark now. What this is, by the way, is the pre- war fill your coffers with gold phase just trade what you can get it all into the bank we'll have some fun from there just to show you how crazy my start is it's only turn 117 and sweden has 10 cities and 49 population on a normal game that would be ferocious but i have 18 cities and 86 population only byzantium yongle mongolia there are very few people who could keep up with that level of start that's that's ridiculous go and find me someone new find me someone new haven't found anyone just yet yeah, but we will. There's Stockholm, by the way. Oh, interesting. They have bigger walls. Keep an eye on that one, I say. Keep an eye on it. The foreign ministry is complete. Okay, we know what to do. We are going to pop in the professional army card and the retinues card because, you know, 75% off it isn't enough. We're going to pop oligarchic legacy back in. Serfdom's good. Natural philosophy is good. These are all good cards. But now the foreign ministry is done. I can go, hey, Kabul, do you mind if I borrow your 
whole army for 195? Yeah, of course I can. Brilliant. Uh, Johannesburg, 315? Yeah, done. Woolen, 692? Yeah, lovely. And Brussels, 347. Excellent. And oh, look, I've got two more envoys with every single person here, which is very useful. I'm sure this won't absolutely spiral into something later. I'm sure it'll be fine. Fine. Kamasi. Okay, Kamasi is very useful. Very useful indeed. We like trade routes to city-states. It is protected by seven envoys, but don't worry. We'll save up to that very, very soon. Yes. Here is China. Oh, and you have Mercury. Funny that, you. Great. Shinshi, you, you, you having Mercury? Didn't you die of Mercury poisoning? I mean, that might be a fairy tale. That might be not true at all, but I feel like you did. Oh yeah, he appears from overseas with snuffly trufflies and offers love luxuries like you haven't seen before and I take all of your gold yes and send you a delegation yes that's right show me everything show me everything you've got exactly where it is exactly how I can get to it none of it will go wrong for you it's all probably fine oh there's the other person each army on each side needs at least one siege weapon so I'm getting a battering ram over there I've got a battering ram in this direction that'll be fine for now although I should research what the upgrade is a siege tower let's get back quickly. The only problem I have with levying this many units in one go is now I have a very complicated turn where I try and work out where everything is and what I do with it and also where all my great generals are. I know I've got a bunch of them but where exactly they are that that is a that is a valid question. Everything's being upgraded by the way. Mana arms upgrade from a swordsman 15 gold. Yep you read that right 15 gold. Who's this last person and are they invadable? Gaul. Hmm Gaul is not very invadable. I'd love to sample your hospitality. 200 strength walls, that's not good. Again though, I bet I can tempt you with goods from a land beyond. I'm sorry, what's this? Chingeti, um, what have you been doing? Oh, I like that city-state. Actually, I should probably have a look. It felt like a lot of city-states were killed. It's difficult, it's difficult to see anymore, but yeah, the AI has been mean on several occasions here. Oh, there's a, there's a good city to attack. That's uh, got no walls at all, excellent. First envoy I send counts is two. All right, it's gonna be difficult, but Amani, can you get over to Kamasi and see what you can do? Oh, my first great engineer. That's a lot of fun. I think I'm gonna attack China and Longji first. Four population means that there's there's a small chance I might get away with holding it. Oh, and there's a seven population on walled city down there as well. Yep, China. China is absolutely the sieve I'm going to attack first. There's cliffs of Dover there. Everything else looks to be pretty well defended in comparison. All of my troops are heading down in this direction, and I have a lot of them. Diplomatically, everyone's pretty chill with each other on that island. There's no wars, there's no one to get involved with. I was thinking about making an alliance with Gaul and then going for a military alliance, but I don't know if I need it, you know? I think I might as well just invade with full speed and ferocity. I will be the world's first ferociraptor. It's like a dinosaur, but more atrocious at war crimes. Have you seen a T-Rex that has committed war crimes? No, exactly. Be scared. Be scared of that image. Also, I'm still settling. <laughs> Don't worry about these cities. These are utterly pointless. I just, I really wanted to fill the continent up. Want me? No, no. Oh, even the capital doesn't have anything either. Oh, okay. Golden age. Let's see what's happening in the world. Normal age for China. Dark age for Gaul. Golden age for Sweden. Okay, that's all good. My next bet is Hicksong Draconis because two movement, the embarked and ship built units. That's really big when you combine the plus two on top of the plus Plus two from the fact that I've levied them in the first place and gunpowder has just been earned. Oh, okay. Let's just remember that in a second. Time for machinery, printing, siege tactics, military science. So this is diplomatic league. I'm going to put one envoy in Kamasi. Actually saying that before we do that, what's their army like? They have an army of zero. I am not interested in Kamasi, but keep an eye out for other city states. I tell you what, I just want to embark my army or disembark my army to upgrade it as quick as I can. I think that's the best bet for me. So surprise wartime. Sorry, China. Sweet in. Oh, this is where I cause chaos. As is Gaul. You see, it all looked so peaceful on this island, but they're all ready to kick off at a moment's notice. If anything, I'm offering a service to all of these people. All right, disembark wherever you can. Get all the admirals in. Get all the generals in. We'll start smashing the city to bits. Yeah, that's a crouching tiger, but you haven't met my troops yet. And I'm attacking from the other side as well. <laughs> China do have some good range defenses, but don't forget, these are all levied troops. 
None of these are mine. Do I care if they get destroyed? No. This is the hardest bit by far, by the way. Getting the landing, getting it to stick, getting that first city. Yeah, this is really, really tough. If you can do this bit, you're going to have a lot of success generally with the invasion. I wish I brought a great general with this lot. I do appreciate that. But I think with a couple of naval invasions and then this caravel attack, I can take the city. Right, there's Vilnius. How protected is Vilnius? A little bit protected again. 80 gold. All of these city-states have had their army shredded, interestingly. Minus 19 loyalty. That's okay. Victor, get in here. Hold it just for a few turns. That's all I need. Just a couple turns. Great general. Now you're over there. There we go. Land there. Land there. Bring you onto that towel. You onto that towel. And you onto this towel. And suddenly we could, in theory, go one, two, three, and then hopefully four, maybe five? Oh, no, not quite, but still very close. Oh, these two love me now. Everyone loves me. And I, to be honest, I don't blame them. I am great. I am lovely. Plus three strength for all naval units. Okay. I'm not even going to bother trying to lure you around. Just, I'll take that bonus. Thank you. Man at arms into musket. Three nighter. <laughs> 20 gold. You know what? I, I will take that as a legitimate cost. That is a that is a billable and fair expense. I'll take that. That is okay. Everybody just make your way over and upgrade. China's just like, what the hell is going on here? And why are they all upgrading in the same turn? And I'm like, I don't know. And by the way, this, my friends, is what I like to call a black army. How cool is that? You just about see the model underneath the fist of doom. Look at it. 49 strength but plus 18 combat strength currently from adjacent levied units. This thing will not be fighting. It's just being tough. I'm just going to go around pillaging everything. Galley attack, galley attack, caravel attack. And ladies and gentlemen, I have exactly the same setup on this side. There's Longji Moksha I've chosen. You go on the second side and again, shall we? Uh, yes, we shall. One, two, three, four upgrades. Actually, no, more than that. There's always more upgrades to be had. Let's see what China does. Oh, they're just going to march their units endlessly into my armies. Okay, go on then. I'll take it. I will take that as an acceptable course of action. Let's unlock this briefly. I'm going to put natural philosophy instead of serfdom, and I'm going to find the raid card. There you are, because I have a certain black army that is very hungry for your stuff. 300 gold. Nice. That is rather delicious. And uh, now we're going to just have what I like to call a musket fest. D don't mind me as I just continue upgrading my armies but I have a lot of units and they all need to move they all need to upgrade they all need to attack actually Vilnius would be handy I know they haven't really got an army but that's good visibility oh they've got one man at arms oh that's fine I'll levy that <laughs> gives me some hero score well oh, here you want to put walls up do you okay I right I'm hearing you I'm understanding you but I fundamentally would like to disagree with that as a course of action actually I need to spend some more time pillaging let's take our time here what ladies and gentlemen is the rush when you've got all this pillaging to do you might as well just have some fun more pillaging it is truly if you ask me one of life's joys these walls all just get they get lost anyway you might as well pillage them oh that was over a thousand gold just about a thousand gold i took that yeah i could get used to this i could get used to this it's the great library, I think, isn't it? Should we have a quick, what I would like to call cheeky encirclement? I think I would like that. I have walls on the way. Do I want to wait for them? I probably should. Probably should wait for them. I think at this rate, we just got to pillage everything. Nothing will remain unpillaged at this point. Do you reckon we can take Wuhan this turn to try and stop this city from falling in loyalty? Is, is one turn of rebellion left in it? I think, I think we can, you know. That'd be close, but there's a battering ram here and we've got a spare musket. And I think with this combined strength, we're at least going to get close. Whether or not we, we do it or not, I'm not sure. But let's give it a go. One attack, two attacks. That's a good start. Three attacks, four attacks, and five. Yeah, there we go. We did it. Keep city. Loyalty minus seven and plus 13. We've done it. Okay, to that, I scream merrily forward. This has been reassuringly successful, this little invasion. <laughs> Sometimes you, there's a small part of you that gets a little bit like, oh, I wonder if this tactic's going to work in this video then you're like yeah no of course i'm playing hungry of course it works <laughs>
<laughs> it's all good. Still doing a lot of pillaging. That's 300 science I just pillaged from that one campus. At this point, instead of actually keeping things for yourself, it is way more effective to pillage it all and then fix it later. Way more effective. Reformed church. Okay, what we're going to do? Change my policies. Raid is good. Oligarchic legacy is good. Retinues. It's all good. I mean, I've got so much gold. I don't need professional army anymore. Instead, I put in wars of religion and I say, thank you. Thank you very much. And then we take any combat like this one and we have a look. Keep an eye on the bottom right. Foreign ministry, great general, oligarchic legacy, raven king, urban warfare. We're not getting that card yet. Well, that's good because it doesn't matter how much of a religion I have. As long as I have a religion, that's all I need. D do we really even care what this is doing? <laughs> Warrior monks. What else is absolutely useless? You know what I think the most useless option would be? Holy waters. Ever used this one before? No, me neither. As I say, literally the only reason I'm making a religion is now when I look at the musket, you'll see plus four wars of religion. So we now have four from Fon of Ministry, five from my general, four from Oligarchic Reg Legacy. That's a difficult one to say. Five from Raven King, 10 from Urban Warfare. I guess that's not strictly related and four from Wars of Religion. So my musketman currently has a plus 32 bonus of which 22 of that are just from modifiers. Watch what that looks like in real life. Okay, this is a fully strong 50 strength city of China. In comes the battering ram. And then we'll start by going across a river, shall we? We'll go <gasps> a one, two, three, four. And uh, we don't even need five and six. It's already done. <laughs> Onwards. Oh, I love playing as hungry. I really, really do. So this war's a religion card. It always applies if I have a religion and I'm fighting people that have their own religions. China and Sweden both have their own religions. And I believe Gaul probably follows something or if they don't, I probably won't get the bonus from Gaul. But I mean, honestly, if, if that's the only thing that I miss out on, I'm doing all right. The only negative is that I'm now taking a small loyalty penalty for any city not following my religion. I wasn't getting that before, but honestly, if that's the worst of it. I am fine. I am fine with that. I actually realized I could make a pretty good point about other strategies that I normally talk about on this channel and it's all to do with happiness. Now I was just looking at happiness because having unhappy cities gives you a negative three loyalty penalty, negative six if it's really unhappy, but we haven't quite hit that point yet. But the wider thing is that I always talk about how important it is for ecstatic cities to be ecstatic. Let me show you what that actually means. At the moment I'm getting 110 science per turn, but every single city in my empire is unhappy. That means I'm getting minus 10% science. I should be on 121 science. And after that, if my cities were ecstatic, they'd be getting a 20% bonus. So that would be 142, 145, that sort of level. So I'm losing the equivalent of about a quarter of my science, just purely from being unhappy. It just shows you how much more yield, and that's of every yield, that's culture, faith, gold, science, production, everything. Quarter of it, down the toilet. When I talk about my favorite civic being professional sports, now you you know why. Whack down some ski resorts, whack down some aquatic centers and stadiums. Hey presto, you're a happy bunny. I always think it's really funny to see the Civ I was just playing as being destroyed by me. It's sort of, it's quite reassuring in a weird way. I, I can't really explain why. It's like, you know you're good, Ursa, but this is kind of proof that you're you're pretty good. What's this? You think you have walls? No, you don't. Even my crossbows do all the damage to you and you're dead. Even the black army's coming in. When I was a young horse my father <laughs> <laughs> took me to the aqueduct. Oh dear. Let's, let's stop that right now. I like to remind people of how relevant and up-to-date my references are at times and my chemical romance from the noughties. There you go. Oh look, it's the mausoleum. I'm building wonders. Again, this is all Warlord's Throne. 20% bonus production in every city means that you've got a lot of spare production just to be rattling around. Now normally I wouldn't really bother. The main thing you can really do is just wait for the AI to build wonders and then steal them. But I like the idea that I'm actually getting quite quite a few engineers in this game and I want to enjoy that. Oh, I saw that one coming. Look, the walls have just upgraded to medieval literally this turn. I saw it coming and I pre-built a siege tower. What I was actually going to do was show you the fun you can have on ancient walls when siege towers and battering rams are both available. Namely that you can attack with both, which is often quite funny, but this works too. Just a little bit of movement whiffery and we can get a whole bunch of other muskets around the city and we can just bypass the walls entirely. One, two, three, four. 
And just, a, should we insult to injury by naval invading? No, I won't waste the health. There you go. China's capital taken. And here is, well, not the cavalry. The cavalry is something different. The rest of musket force alpha coming just to finish off China. And that should be enough units, I think. Well, Sweden is giving me 31 gold per turn and Gaul, 10 gold per turn. Oh, but Sweden only has 165 military strength. You'd think they would have considered that one and gone, hmm maybe more maybe more no don't worry about it it's fine i'm sure there's nothing to worry about until let's oh, you know what i'm just gonna send some units blindly in this direction and see what we find oh units on the border who is this I'm the sort of Civ player that explores and discovers the world by declaring war and just attacking things wildly. So let's find ourselves a bit of information by just going a plonk. Oh look, it's an unf undefended city. Oh, funny that. Crossbow and everything. Yeah, oh, this is great. And so the next wave of assaulting begins. I found the other city-state, Kaguana. 270 gold. Oh, that's actually got an army. That's got an army. Okay, let's uh, keep that in mind for later. We have 15 turns left on my levied units, by the way. Check out some enough to kill Sweden with? Hmm, maybe not quite, but I think it'll be quite close. One attack, two, three, four, and that city's taken already, and how unloyal is it? Minus 23, Ooh, get in there, Victor. Pretty much all of Sweden's cities have medieval walls, so my ancient battering rams, they're not going to be so useful. I might just upgrade them as they go. Military emergency. Well, I can only vote against it for the ones. Let's see if Gaul goes to war with me. No, Gaul's like, yeah, he seems pretty chill. I like Gaul. I like the cut of their jib. Oh, there's Chingati. Oh, there's a city-state, but it but it's rebelled. Get in there quick, yes. I think that's China out, by the way. It took me a couple more turns than I thought to take their last city, but I did it in the end. She works quite well padding out the final cities by a turn or two, because it means my warlord's throne has more time just to get me full benefit. It's awesome. Oh, builds walls immediately. Gets me science for adjacent mountains. I've got a five map. Oh, I've got a five. There we go. Look at that. Make your way over here, please. Gaul has now denounced me. All right. Well, I mean, if you're going to denounce me in a totally unprovoked way, then, oh, you have to ask yourself, what could I have done? What did I do to deserve that denouncement? Oh, no one can ever be too sure. No one can ever be too sure. There's the siege tower, and you can see I'm going to lose this city to loyalty in, like, a turn. So I better just stop messing around and take this one. Although I will do a little bit of pillage first, just to get the extra gold, because we're not far away from military science. And now, Moksha, move across to the new city, and you can see... Yep, we're going to hold that onto five turns. That one is now stabilized. It's just a balancing act of like, how quickly can I move? The answer is normally pretty quick, but you really do have to move rapido. Can I just say, what a flex from the AI. They took the city state and then built Machu Picchu in it. What a flex. Just like, yeah, I can build it anywhere I want. I for one, respect that. One, two crossbows. And I think, yeah, I mean, this has only got 20 health. That'll be quite an easy take. Uh, so I shall take it. This is in my capital again with pilfered and stolen production. Chichen Itza. I've actually working a good chunk of rainforest in this city. This is probably the first time in ages that I've actually built one that is pretty useful. Shall I show you? Are you ready to see? Ta-da! Look at that. One, two, three, four, five tiles. I'm quite proud of that, actually. <laughs> It's pretty good. Oh no, Terracotta Army. I've got to do it. It's five turns, but that's going to be chaos. Every single unit of mine needing a promotion. Oh, say no. Chingeti, I would love Machu Picchu, but I'm going to liberate you because I like city-states better. Oh no, Stockholm has put Renaissance walls up. Ah, oh, don't do that. That sucks. Now, this is not a weakness in Hungary. This is being slightly ill-prepared, but that's okay because what we need to do is just work on efficiently lowering the strength of the city. And to do that, to pillage all its districts. Now the aqueduct won't help, but the holy site will in a little bit. And then you can see we're not doing a lot of damage. We're not taking a lot of damage either. And because I'm getting double experience on my attacks, I might as well attack into the city and level myself up repeatedly. And look, do you see already? It's about a sixth of the walls have already come off. We should be fine. Time for a formal war on Gaul. Only I have 170 strength. That's so weak. I guess this continent has seen nothing but peace. They just don't know what all this war is. I feel almost cruel attacking, but I don't really. I built Colosseum in my conquered Dutch lands because they put a load of cities in a very small proximity and I thought, you know what, bit of culture, bit of immunity, bit of loyalty, that'll all be lovely. Well, apart from the loyalty, that's useless. Not been anything in Civ 
is useless, but that bit is. That's what my government is looking like at the moment, by the way. Combat bonuses and then loyalty, because loyalty is a big issue when your empire is this unhappy. But we're working on speed. We're not working on happiness. That's the important thing to remember. The annoying thing is this liberated city-state hasn't appeared on the list. Bit of a glitch, that. I've seen that happen before, and I'm not sure why it does, but it means that we can't interact with it, which is really annoying. Come on, Stockholm, please, can you give up? I have had enough of you. I just need you to fall. Hey, it's getting there, but it's going to take a few more turns, unfortunately. Military science. I tell you what, my government does need to change a little bit now because I want to put... Oh, no, do I even need professional army? Probably don't, actually, to be fair. But now I've got line infantry. How much is the upgrade? 60 gold. Yeah, go on then. Well, I'm actually having cities flip because I'm going so slowly, but unfortunately for the AI, I just take it back immediately and renew my warlord's phone. Fun way of repeating and recycling that bonus if ever it's getting a bit low. Come on, this needs to be the turn that I take Stockholm. Please, 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 oh, please. Yay, please. All right, that's good. Might be able to take this city at the same time, actually, if I'm really lucky. No, this one's going to be a bit harder, but that's not going to take too long. And this city should be a whole, whole bit easier because it doesn't have Renaissance walls. Oh, so many floods prevented by the Great Bath. Three in total so far. It's a shame I've built over all the floodplain, but you know, it's all good. Upgrading all of my troops. It's so much fun. For 60 gold, it's fine. And and there's another city taken as well. Ah, here we go. Reinforcements have finally arrived in Gaul's lands, including this line of injury. Oh, saved you for a second. One, two, and wabam. Oh, you better believe it. Oh, hello. That's a big boy. Oh, those horses. Those horses got pillaged again. Honestly, that's like the third time that's happened. Terracotta army. Oh, no. I need to promote every single one of my units, and I've got so many. Oh, dear. Why did I build this wonder? That's terrifying. Oh, Chingeti has finally appeared, though. I don't know why that that took so long to appear, but it now has. Excellent. All right. Well, now that I've got a promotion on every unit, I'm just going to take a little bit of time just for me. A lot of urban warfare promotions. Oh, and elite guards. Oh, yes. These are the sort of promotions I can get on board with. Oh, no. Just, I'm just not. I'm just not. Nope. Nope. Joan of Arc has arrived and now finally my line inventory have got an upgrade. Been waiting ages for that. Oh, these upgraded troops are so much stronger though. Wham! That city got thoroughly George Michaeled. And line inventory attacking with 92 strength. Oh my lord. These attacks are huge. And they're double attacks as well. I forgot about that. My first city from Gaul has fallen as well. We're upgrading all the line inventory again. This is fun. Renaissance walls again, but this time surrounded by line infantry and with a great general. Can we break three let's find out one attack two attacks three attacks four attacks five attacks six attacks and seven yay renaissance wars busted oh hungry it plays by the rules of every other one it, it feels a bit like playing byzantium you know when you just you forget how to play civ normally for a second and you just play like byzantium and you sort of think back afterwards and you're like wow that was a random game oh look it's called capital ah i sort of stumbled across that i didn't even mean to be here oh also my black army is now a huzzah which is possibly even cooler oh and ignore ignore the culture on top of that horse but yeah look it's cool voting oh i really really hoped we were gonna get melee plus five that would have been hilarious i'll vote for myself on both things i don't know if people have noticed by the way that sometimes i do change the colors of sieve now often oh that's colossus has given me a trade route nice i do change the colors of sieves because i kind of prefer them but i often change the colors of sieves that start in green because i find it really difficult to see them on the mini map i don't know something about the green color i, I just find it quite tricky that's why i do it hungry that's me. I get culture bombs and city center buildings again. Lovely. Gottenberg. I reckon. I reckon. And it's just a, just a hunch. I reckon we can take this city this turn. One, two, and three. Yeah, you know what? It was a correct hunch. As soon as we find a city that doesn't have Renaissance walls, it's like, oh, party time, population, Ursa. Nationalism. Normally this would give me plus 10 combat strength troops, but alas, you can't call, well, not very easily anyway, city-state troops. So for another time, Gaul's capital, it's under siege. I'm just trying to break through Renaissance walls again with my bare fists. <laughs> it's taken a while. But luckily, I think I might have found a secret mountain passage. It takes us around the back. Yeah, there is is a city here. I think I can mostly skip around it. The units are all converging everyone and I'm gonna 
send old Jeanne of Arc over to go and help. A knight thinks that it's going to block me from getting another unit in. No, no. I will kill it with a crossbow, even if that crossbow ends up dying. Right, Jeanne of Arc, in you come. Come on. Come on. Do it for us, sir. Do it for us, sir. And a one, a two, a three, a four, and a five. Oh, next turn. Next turn, I think. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, the turn. The turn. I was just about to win. <laughs> <laughs> All my units just got taken back. All right, Kabul, 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 Wulin, Kabul. Kabul is the most important one. I need you back. Don't you dare. Don't you dare do this to me. 1,100. That's at half price. Yeah, that is often the problem. That's the only problem is you do end up having to pay quite a lot to levy them once you've upgraded them. But there you go. That's most of the units back. Okay. Yep. Some of them, some of them may have disappeared, but there's enough here to do this next turn, I think. It's such a colourful army once it all disintegrates. <laughs> I want it back. I'll have to see once the city states take their turns how many of the units just get disbanded. A lot of them are actually at full strength or not at full strength so they can't get disbanded which is quite nice. I feel like it's always a little harsh when that happens. Oh Johannesburg your unit is in the way. Come on don't be like this. <laughs> Don't be like this. Can I, can I please get the kill? Please, please put me out of my misery. Oh, thank you. Turn 149 domination victory with good old Hungary. Totally balanced. No game modes, no mods, totally random map. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Hungary. It's Hungary, everyone. I reckon my score was okay, but we did early win this quite a lot. Yeah, only 10th, 1,300 points. That's not too bad. Buildings constructed. Yeah, that's Warlord's phone for you. Cities captured a lot. Cities founded, actually fairly decent. Districts constructed. This is why you beat the AI. Actually, the AI didn't really have a chance to build much. I kind of invaded quite quickly. Culture, I was winning by the end. Science wasn't too bad, you know? Yeah, I didn't think so. What is going on with Sweden? That is an incredibly zigzag pattern. Is that something to do with the city-states? Or is that to do with happiness? Or, oh, who knows? In the comments, let me know what you think that is. That's very distinct. China's doing it a bit as well. Faith was okay. Gold, you can see just the sheer power of pillaging when it just goes boop and, and shoot up like that. Score? Well, yeah, once I started invading, I very much started winning that one. Look, first conquer, second conquer, and then eternal conquer at the end. Religion's founded. That's just for the plus four bonus. People forget about that bonus. It's very handy. Units killed, about 60. Units lost, two. <laughs> just, just two. And then wonders constructed. I actually constructed the most. Yeah, you just have to look at the bonuses that are here right now. This line inventory, 65 strength. Attacks at 87. That's 22 more powerful than usual. All of the bonuses adding up. Foreign Ministry, Great General, Oligarchic Legacy. I said it that time. Raven King and Wars of Religion all stacking together. Now, if I'd gone for the naughty government fascism, that would have been plus five. The World Congress could have added another plus five to that eventually. Imagine if I had a CAD. Melee units are able to break down walls. Now that, now that would be something rather funny. And imagine if you'd seen this city keep growing. We were already up to 93 production. My capital was genuinely just chilling in the background, becoming quite the force with a dam, an industrial zone that was just about building up to coal power. Hungary is an absolute powerhouse. At this point, by the way, once I'd taken over this continent, I could have just gone peaceful and traded very peacefully with the rest of the AI for the rest of the game and no one would have noticed anything. I just chose to get a little bit funky, shall we say. So ladies and gentlemen, next time somebody tells you to Buddha your past and tells you confidently that Hungary, it's not very good Civ. It's a bit disjointed. It's not very powerful. Politely, please refer them to one of my many Hungary videos. That'll show them. <laughs> <laughs> it really will. We didn't even get to use thermal barbs or hussars. Oh, thank you so much for watching, everybody. It has been a pleasure to play Hungry again. I've just seen what I'm filming next, and oh boy, that's a little bit different. So I better get jumping to that, and if you just keep watching now, there'll be another video that comes on after this one. It'll never end. Never. Even if you want it to. Your eyes will physically glue to the screen. So thanks, everyone. See you later. Don't die in Mount Kilimanjaro. Goodbye. And finally, a very special shout out goes to Glory. Glorious Petra, Matthew Wilkinson, Paul Coffey, Portland, Clint Hennis, Scott Stratton, Major King Kong, Davalek, Skeptical Bear, Cinnamon Beard, Petra Ryan, Rom88, Radiatore, Private Selection, Genoa Salami, Boyzoro, Callum Billy, Garrett Gowan, Polar Bear Ray, El Truant, Creston, RB Hedged, Mushkin Mandeltort, Esri Dax, Debel Time, Burial, I'm Daft, Gooberman, Dr. Bobby, Polar Waller Bear, Mixomatosis, NTG Golfman, Victor McPupster, Indigenous 68, Technology Poet, Teddy Thank you everyone for your support. See you all in the next video. Goodbye!